Hello everyone, how's it going? Dr. Incompetent here, and let's resume our complete beginner's guide to Subnautica in 2023 here. And, well, there's the Aurora burning away. I want to say I got a great tip from uh, a commenter on the previous video, and this was something I actually didn't know about, but it would have saved me a lot of water uh, and food when I was talking to you all last time and explaining things, you can actually, in the options, go into the accessibility, and you can tell it to pause the game when you're in the PDA. So what this will do for you is let you pause the game while you're scrolling through your recipes or your log, and give you all the time in the world to look at that without worrying about oxygen, food, water uh, for that moment. Now, of course, um, you know, if you're playing and you're not looking at that too much and you don't want to distract from the survivability aspect of the game, you know, you don't have to enable this. But I'm going to turn it on just so that when I'm talking in the guide, I don't use more food than I normally would because I certainly did uh, speaking. So that's something fun that you can do. And you notice here I've got the PDA enabled and the game is in fact paused. So. Um, with that being said, what is our job here? Our job, whenever we're playing Subnautica, is to figure out what's going on, figure out where we are, how can we be saved, and what increases our chances of survival. Our PDA will adjust itself and adapt to the things that we find and craft so that our chances of survival will increase. So we are incentivized to explore, pick things up, try to interact with everything, try to build everything that we have access to from our blueprints and see what they do to make ourselves stronger. Now, um, at this point, we've figured out basically what food and water we can get by just catching fish with our hands. And that is all fine and good, but the problem with doing that is that it's very labor intensive. We're going to spend all of our time doing that and uh, not enough time trying to figure out how to get off of this planet or how to find a place to survive or just, you know, do something other than living hand to mouth like that. So what we want to do, of course, is keep our food and water maintained. But with we also want to start building all of these different tools. If we build the scanner, for example, we can get more information about objects in the environment, learn new blueprints, and get more story, lore, and an understanding of what's going on. The repair tool is something that you can use to repair um, different structures within the game most importantly right now for us it's going to be our life pod it took damage in the crash um, and we want to fix some of it so we could use that the flashlight is wonderful for swimming at nighttime you see how when it becomes dark i mean it's a whole nother world down there and luckily there's some iridescent plants and animals and things to illuminate it somewhat, but this will help with our visibility. The survival knife is terrific for combat, okay, um, of course, but most importantly, we're going to be using it for interacting with the environment. Subnautica is not really a, a combat kind of a game. You know, you're not making guns and shooting things necessarily. It's not how you deal with the way that this game operates and your own survival. It's more about exploration. It's more about um, technology. And so while you can fight things with a survival knife, it's not really the object and you're not great with it. Um, the air bladder, bladder uh, will, like, allow you to, uh, you know, just shoot up if you're down low and you want to get up to the surface really quickly. And the flare um, can, as it says here, be used to distract predators and light things up, but it's disposable. There's a lot of base pieces that we can build right now. 
Um, and at some point, when we get enough technology and resources, we will be able to build our own little base with these things and expand it as we get more recipes. But right now, our base is going to be inside the life pod. Uh, so what we want to be doing is not making any of this stuff below the tool section right now, but eventually we'd love to make some of these machines um, like a sea glide or a mobile vehicle bay, uh, but we don't have the component blueprints to understand even how to build these things. So for example, with the sea glide, you see how it has a zero out of two and an empty bar below it. That means we need to get um, two pieces of the blueprint, basically, to understand even how to make this. So we need to go looking around for documents and, and uh, data pads and information like that about those technologies before we can build them. So we're going to be focusing on our equipment and our tools. Now, we already built the standard O2 tank. It would be better to have the high capacity O2 tank to give us even more oxygen. Fins will be terrific for increasing our swimming speed. Okay, and all of these other things um, are fairly helpful, but we are already generating first aid kits. We have one fire extinguisher, which is plenty for right now, and we don't need pipes and air pumps at the moment. So, with that being said, let's take a gander at our inventory. Um, let me go back here. So, we have a bunch of titanium. All right. And um, we have some food if we need it, okay? So uh, I might want to eat this decomposing cooked boomerang, but it's so decomposing that it's going to take a lot of our um, water to even drink it. You can see it says H2O minus 10. So I'm not going to actually eat it. It's too um, rotten at this point. So I'm just going to drop it, and I'm going to actually eat uh, this one. It will overfeed us, but we can eat it before it um, spoils. And you can see how our satiety actually went above 100. So it didn't stop at 100. It went slightly above it. So we didn't actually get overfed too much. Okay, so that's good for us. We are, you can overfeed yourself a little bit, right? So that turns out to be pretty good. We still have our extinguisher. And what you can do... Even if you're not at the fabricator when you're in your PDA, you can look at your different blueprints and see what you can make. So um, if we want to make some of these technologies, we're going to need a bunch of things that we don't have much of just yet. Now, titanium ingots, I'll tell you, um, you don't really want to make these right now. Uh, they're not useful for anything right now, and it'll just take 10 of your titanium and lock them up. So I don't make these, even though these are hard to, you know, the titanium is going to get unwieldy as we get a lot of it. But what I do is just make storage lockers instead to put things in. Let's drop down and let's swim. So we've already found some of this stuff. We can't collect this right now, okay, because we want to have a knife. So I'm just going to start looking for things like this. And, ooh, we got some Air copper. Is an essential component of any powered equipment. Your probability of survival has just increased to unlikely, but plausible. Fantastic. So now we have some copper. And I'm just kind of swimming around. Notice we have so much more oxygen. Local radiation readings suggest the Aurora's drive core has reached critical state. Yes. Detonation will occur within two hours. So it's the drive core is going to explode, and do not worry about that. Now, what you should worry about is um, these things. So um, sometimes when you're down here, there can be very hostile enemies, okay? And I'm not going to get any closer to them at the moment. They might actually not be as hostile as I'm imagining them to be. I'm going to go to the surface. There's some that are worse when you get close to their eggs. Um, but I'm just not going to mess around with it. I'm going to be happy with what I've got and just kind of, you know, occasionally, if I want, pick up a peeper, something like that. Okay, great. And 
if you want to see if those that's our dead fish that we dropped if you want to see if those fish that I swam away from are hostile well we can scan them later so copper is necessary for us and oh here's some metal salvage so things like this are good for just getting us enough metal now I don't need acid mushrooms I've got some and I don't really need any more this is definitely hostile so this guy's gonna swim at us and explode okay so we need to swim away and you see we took some damage there now that I think about it, those little guys that I was running away from might not be hostile. I was confusing them with those dudes that just burst out of their little hiding place and then their nest, perhaps, and then swam at us and detonated. They can do a ton of damage, so you want to make sure that there's not more than one of them and that you're swimming away from them so that you can minimize somewhat the damage they're going to do with their detonation, okay? I've been hurt, but it's not the end of the world, and I do have tanks. I'm picking up all this metal salvage that I find. I do have, I'm sorry, medical kits, first aid kits to use if I need it. And you'll notice again just how much longer we can stay under once we make a better tank. I'm looking through these tubes, just seeing if there's any anything stuck to the surface that I want. Um, here we go. Here's some more metal. So now I'm going to go back to base. I'm going to take all of this metal with me. I'm going to use the icon that it displays right there showing my base and how far away it is to just kind of help me um, orient myself. And we got a peep or two just in case. It'll be even easier to fish once we get some fins, but we need uh, silica for that. And to do that, let's go ahead and open this up. And I'm just going to, first of all, just bust down um, all of my metal salvage into titanium. Okay. There's no purpose to have the metal salvage other than titanium, so always just break it down. Um, now, um, in uh, equipment, okay, I can't make this yet because I need silver so I don't have that but I want tools so if I want a knife okay I'm gonna need silicon rubber and if I want any of these other tools I'm gonna need batteries so we can get silicone rubber um, but we're gonna have to have something specific to do that so we need both batteries and we need um, rubber now I'll show you here if you want um, rubber, you need creep vine seed clusters, okay? So we're going to go need to get those. And if we want batteries, all right, we need acid mushrooms and copper ore. So actually, we can make batteries because we found that piece of copper. So we're going to go to our storage container, all right? I'm going to start throwing in a bunch of titanium. I don't need to carry this much around. And I'm going to actually pick up a couple of mushrooms now another thing i want to do with my fabricator is i'm going to make a deployable and i'm going to make a waterproof locker these only cost four titanium okay i'm going to make it right here and it'll go in our inventory and then i'm going to go up here and i'm going to go ahead and go to the electronics tab from the resources panel and i'm going to make a battery and again um, we found a new blueprint for a power cell, for example. So remember, you want to make everything that you can just to unlock new blueprints, new things that you can craft, all right? So at this point, um, I'm going to go down. Now I'm going to select on my hotbar the fourth option, which is this locker. Okay, I'm using the directional pad keys to bounce over to the locker. It was automatically placed into my hotbar. If it's not, then all you need to do is just go into your inventory, select the waterproof locker, and I'm uh, my control, it says assign quick slot, whatever button you have for that, you just push triangle, and then you just put it where you want on your um, bar here, and I'm going to say right there, okay? Uh, and that's fine. And then I'm going to be holding it. And I'm going to simply um, push 
R2, the trigger, to just let go of it, basically, to put it out there. And then it's going to float. So I like to put my lockers right by my um, life pods so that they're easy to find. Okay, now you can change the name of the locker. So if I point at it, all right, um, when you kind of have to aim and it says edit locker name when the, the hand icon changes into a finger and you can then open this and you can just say, you know, um, whatever you want. You could call it storage, but what if I just call it um, or for right now and then I'm going to uh, let go and push circle to get out of it and you can see now on the top of the locker it says or and then I can put all of my titanium inside all right at least as much as it can hold and free up my inventory space and then it's organized now I know oh there's or in here okay fantastic all right so let me get a boomerang just in case but what we need are some bladder fish we have one um oh Yep, I was putting my locker down and forgot about that. Night is happening, so don't worry about the aurora exploding. By the way, here's the guy I was scared of, and you can see um, we can't catch him, but he's not dangerous. I was just being overly concerned about guys that are in caves that can swim up and try to blow you up. Now, notice how I'm going down here into this cave. And it's pretty cool. These acid mushrooms light it up. Here's a bladder fish for us, actually. If we want to... Oh, but then... Bad guy. Okay. So you heard her talk about sulfur deposits. Those guys that blow up like that, they sometimes hang out around sulfur deposits. So that's very good for us. The explosions are not. All right? Now... When you're down here, I want to just give you a little bit of a lesson of Subnautica 101. Exploring caves is a lot of fun. You can find good stuff in there. You have to be a little bit wary of exploding enemies like I've been showing you. But you always need to remember where your way out is. Because if you get lost down here and you run out of oxygen, you will drown very, very quickly. So we're going to take this guy's cave sulfur. Those dudes come out of a little nest, almost like out of a firecracker, and they explode. And inside there is cave sulfur, which we need for crafting a lot of things. So as long as you can minimize the damage that they do to you, you can go back and collect the cave sulfur, and you'll be very happy about having it. I'm still not picking up any of these creature eggs. They don't do anything for us at this point in the game. So I'm not going to mess with it. Um, here's some metal for us. We can get a couple of mushrooms if we want for our um, battery game. But as you can see, mushrooms are extremely plentiful. So I'm not overly concerned about trying to farm a ton of these. But what I do need to get is some oxygen. It's a good idea when you're at 20 seconds or so to just really make sure you're close enough to the surface and just swim back up. All right, so let's just keep exploring. I'd love to catch this bladderfish. Got it. And this one. Got it. Oh, good, yes. Water is so important early in the game. And let's go here. And this is the cave where I was really afraid. There's some quartz. And we get it. Okay, and here's something we can break. And it's just titanium unfortunately those little outcroppings those little rocks they have a random chance to drop a set type of resource from it so um some of them depending on what they're called if they're limestone or shale or sandstone they have a chance to drop different types of metallic deposits for you uh sometimes even gemstones so we're going to start keeping track of which rocks drop what. Now, what, what, we, what do we need right now? Well, we need copper and we need silver, of course. Any metal really is useful to us, but we're looking for the more exotic stuff. And let's just kind of take a gander around here. It's always harder at night, but the nice thing about night is we can find a bunch of these bladderfish. And right now, there's really no reason to 
turn our nose up at bladderfish because we always need water until we get better means of producing it, which we don't have at the moment. And nighttime is kind of cool for finding bladderfish because they glow. And so they're a little bit easier to see. So I'm staying very, very close to my base. I'm not going too deep, and I'm just looking around. I'm picking up low-hanging fruit, lots of metal and things. And you might think, well, I've got enough titanium, but you'll see Oxygen. that you'll need a lot of it. Oh, and it says a quantum detonation has a quantum detonation has occurred in the Aurora's drive core. Take a look at the Aurora. The will reach a supercritical state in T minus ten, nine, eight. Let's watch the Aurora. Seven, six, five, four, three, two. Yeah. So the Aurora is exploding um, at the front. a massive incident and because the reactor okay has just leaked remember that the PDA adjusts itself based on the environment and it says it's hinting to us you're gonna need to build a radiation suit if you want to go close to the Aurora and explore your ship because it's leaking radiation so now we just know, hey, if we want to go back there, uh, we're going to have to be really careful. All right, here comes an explodey guy, and he will immediately come out and get us. And we just, I'm going to swim way over here and try to take as little of the damage as I can. And that's fine. And he blasted us, but we can come get his sulfur and be happy about it. And also, he has, what are these? Sandstone. So, break, break, break. So, we got lead. Okay, sandstone gave us gold. And sandstone gave us silver. Yes, we got silver. Let's get out. We're at 15 oxygen. Okay. Uh-oh. 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 Go, go, go. We made it. Okay. So you could see that we got lead, gold, and silver from sandstone. So whenever we see sandstone, those could be expected as well as maybe some other resources. So that's great because we didn't have any of those things. So, of course, as I was saying, it's always a game about trying to get as many different resources as you can. I'm going to open this up. We got a free med kit, um, and we can go ahead and use one. I'm just going to use a first aid kit to get my health up. And then we're going to go back to the fabricator. I'm going to bust up this titanium. Now she's telling you information. Okay, I'm going to make this class about some of the stuff that we just got. And remember, if you forget, I'm going to get some water here. I'm just going to go ahead and make all of this into water. Remember, the fish will not go bad unless you cook them. So you can store them either way. The water will not go bad, so might as well just make a ton of it. All right. So now we have a bunch of water, which is amazing. Um, and we are getting a little bit hungry, so I'll cook one peeper that I plan to eat immediately. Maximize its value. And now we can make... Um, well, she, she's telling us the radiation suit is here. Now, we have the silver, we have the glass, and we have the titanium to make a high-capacity O2 tank. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go out of this, and I'm going to go into my inventory. And first of all, we're going to eat this um, cooked peeper, and then we're going to drink a little bit. All right, now, I'm going to take off my O2 tank. Okay, my standard O2 tank. I'm just going to push X to unequip it so it goes in my inventory. You can see it's huge in my inventory. But now, if I go back, I can go to um, equipment and I can make a high-capacity O2 tank. All right? So, for example, let me go back. Let me show you. If I'm wearing the standard tank, I go to 75 seconds. Okay? But if, with that silver we just found, I go to here and I make a high-capacity O2 tank... Okay, 
I'm going to go into my inventory. And we're already using it, actually. Um, it automatically equipped it. And look at that. Now we, we have 133 seconds of O2. So we're like effectively, you know, round about doubling what we had. 150 would be pure double. We got 135 now. So, I mean, we are able to stay underwater for a much longer time. I'm going to put away some stuff now. I'm going to put away some... Actually, you know what? I'm not. I lied about that. I'm going to go here, and we're going to say, what can we make um, with what we've got? Well, we have sulfur, right? And we know that we need sulfur uh, for... Let's see. Oh, she was just telling us we needed it for something. I Yeah, here we go, for flares. So we can make flares if we want them, but what I really want is the repair tool. Now, in the meantime... We're going to go ahead and make some more lockers. You need to have inventory space so you can pick up whatever you find when you're out there exploring. It just makes your life so much better to have a bunch of that stuff. All right, so let's see. Anything in here that I want? Well, yes, I want more ore, okay? I, I want to make one more locker, and I have space for one ore outside. Inside, okay, I'm going to put... Um, all of my food and my uh just yeah right now i've got food okay and i've got some flares too so if you want to take flares with you um i'll take them just to show you and explore caves with them i personally don't use flares very much but that doesn't mean they're not good and that i shouldn't or that you might not enjoy them i just um don't use them All right, now I'm going to go ahead and select my other locker. I'm going to push R2. I'm just going to drop it right over here, right next to my other locker. Okay, and we can drop another one. And now we have a little bit more storage out here. Now what I'm going to do on this locker, I'm just going to go close to it. All right, and I'm going to... It's a little bit wonky sometimes, but there we go. Get it so I can change the name. And I'm going to call this one um, Water. Okay, and I'm gonna push circle once you're done with it, and then go open storage, and I'm just gonna put in three water. I'm gonna keep two water on me in case I get thirsty um, on the road. I'm actually gonna uh, <laughs> be drinking one immediately anyway. And then I've got a few things over here that I'm gonna put into this locker that I will um, just for the sake of this stage i'm just going to call it random okay and we're just going to put in uh some of these other you know resources that we have that we don't need at the moment but we would need it if we wanted to craft with it okay so now we have way more space available uh, i'm even going to put this battery in here i don't need a battery right now all right and i'm going to go in here i'm going to drink some water all right, and then now I'm going to start swimming, but I'm going to swim with a little bit of a different purpose. I'm looking for something specific at this point. All right, now what is that, you might ask? Well, here we go. Here's something. Sometimes, and by sometimes I mean all the time, when you're swimming, you're going to find stuff like this. Cargo boxes. These are pieces of the Aurora that have flown out, and you'll find um, sections of the Aurora just sunk into the water. Little boxes like this, maybe bigger chunks. We've already been smelting down some of the metal, but here, look at this. We found a sea glide fragment. Now, this will help us learn how to build the sea glide. You need these fragments to complete the blueprint. Unfortunately, you have to have a scanner. You don't pick these up. You need a scanner to get those, okay? So we need a scanner. So I'm going to go up and get some O2 here. And while it's daytime, I'm going to explore a little bit because I'm looking for... Um, something like this here we go okay this is what we need do you see these giant green plants that are just kind of coming up from the bottom 
like a big tangle of seaweed. What you, this is what we need. Um, these are creep vines, and we need these babies to get rubber, okay? So what we need are the seeds, and the seeds look like these big yellow sacks. So I'm gonna go down here, but, okay, you see that big fish? That guy's dangerous, and they often hang out in the creep vine area. So we need to find some creep vine seeds that we can get, but that aren't Cl too close to one of those nasty guys because they will not be pleased if we get close. So I'm going to swim in just really, really fast here and just try to um, pick this and go. We got to go. They're following us. Okay, we're running. I'm swimming up. I'm swimming up. We want to swim away from this dude if we can. And we need to get some air. And we need to hope that that fish is not following us. Okay. All right. We have no means to fight. We don't even have, um, you know, the, uh, the knife to chop people back. So it's a little bit awkward, but here we go. Now, there's a, there's a guy down there who's looking saucy. Okay. So I'm just going to kind of toss my flare over in his direction. Hopefully distract him long enough so that I can pick a bunch of these seeds. Okay? You just want to pick as many seeds as you can. Just when it says X, grab, grab, grab. All right. And try to get some here. And our inventory is full. And we're going up to the top and we're going home. We're going to take this haul and go home there's our life pod right there all right so i threw the flare just to momentarily distract that enemy so that's a way to use your flare and now that we have that okay let's check out our inventory these this is why i wanted to clear space these things are enormous so these creep vine seed clusters are huge. They just take up a lot of space, and we want a bunch of them. Because once we process them, they won't take up that much space. So here's all of our lockers, here's our life pod, and we're going in. And now, we can go over here to, um, it's 76. You can always mouse over or put the cursor on the medical kit fabricator to see how much more it's 77 percent done with another one for us i'm going to use the fab and now we can go to basic materials and we can make rubber so we can get two pieces of rubber from every um single seed vine cluster that we got and we don't need the clusters themselves at all right now so just turn all of it into rubber Awesome. There we go. So now we have a ton of um, rubber. Now we um, also need lubricant as well. So I, sh I should have made some lubricant. Um, but in the meantime, we're going to go to equipment and we can right away make fins. So these fins take two rubber and they just give us 15% increased swim speed. So now we're going to be just faster. They will equip automatically. Right. For our safety. But remember, whenever she says stuff like that to you, um, you can always go back to the log and see, like, oh, this is what she said about silver. It's that we can use it to make wiring kits. So, oh, this is her talking about the radiation suit, and this was the aurora exploding, and this is what she said about what sulfur is used for, stuff like that. All right. So now I'm going to go into the storage container. And I'm going to be like, look at all this rubber we got, but we need titanium, so I'm going to take it out, okay? And now I can go here, and we can make um, our knife. So now we have a knife. Weapons were removed from standard survival blueprints following the massacre 
on Abraxas Prime. The knife remains the only exception. So it's not to say you use the right trigger to chop, by the way, with your knife when you have it equipped. It's not to say that you can't fight stuff with your knife. Many players do. You can kill things um, absolutely with your knife, but it's not very strong. And you're going to find things that are not intimidated by this at all, but it's better than nothing. Okay? I don't mean to say there's no combat. I just mean... It's not the primary focus of the game. All right. Uh, so now we can also, okay, we want to make a scanner. We need a battery for that. We need sulfur for the repair tool, which we can make right away. And we need a battery and glass for that flashlight, okay? So remember, what do we need? Um, uh, that's... And if you want to make a base, by the way, if you want to build yourself a base, you have to build this Habitat Builder tool to even get there. So you need a computer chip, wiring kit, and battery for that. So if we want some more batteries, what do we have to have? Well, of course, um, we need copper and acid mushrooms. So I'm going to go out. We're going to go into our box labeled random. Um... And we're going to... Oops, I don't want to pick it up. I just want to open it. Yep. And we're going to take out one battery. One gold. Well, the gold isn't going to do anything for us. Let's take out some sulfur. And let's take out um, titanium. Mm, and one quartz. That's fine. That's, we don't need too much right now. But here we go. And at this point, it's beeping, so it's done with our first aid kit. You want to take that out as often as you can so that it will grow another one for you. All right, and then now we can go into equipment, and we can make a repair tool, and we can make um, a scanner. We're going to make both of them. Okay. So the scanner is amazing. All right. And so is the repair kit. But both of these tools, the scanner, you can see them on the bottom hot bar. This is the repair kit. I have it equipped. This is the scanner. I've got it equipped. They have a green bar next to them, which means they're power. So they can run out of power, and you have to replace the battery. I'm just going to quickly go over to the um, repair kit. All right. And you can aim it at this. You see how it says 40%? Just hold R2. And you'll just kind of fix this up magically. It's using its electric power and bam. We are stabilizing the escape pod. All right. And this gives you data that gives you story. Okay. Tells you a little bit about what's going on. And then you come over here and you can fix this, which is the radio. And you can use this. There's a message waiting for us if we want to listen to it. And you can attempt to try to contact other survivors if there are any. Boom. And now we just got ourselves a knife. We got ourselves a scanner. And we got ourselves a repair tool. We also built a much bigger O2 tank and some fins and a ton of rubber. Okay, so we will need to go back to get some uh, lubricant at some point. But for the time being, we are doing very, very nicely on our tools and our resources. Uh, so, everyone, this is a good place to stop the second episode. We're building up nicely. I hope you're enjoying this. I hope you're finding it useful. And if you have any questions about the game, just post those in the comments below, and I'd love to help you out. Everyone take care.